I am what is known as a T12 paraplegic. T12 denotes the 12th thoracic vertebrae, which is the highest level of my injury. Injury at T12, which is at this level, results in paralysis from here down. The level of injury and the extent of the paralysis is normally how paraplegia is defined, and yet this in no way describes the true nature of the condition. Generally speaking, a spinal injury results from an accident that causes severe trauma to the body. With such a trauma from injury to the very core of the body, it is as though the electric switch is turned off and all the systems of the body shut down. If we were to get off, up and shake ourselves off afterwards, then everything may start up again, but this is impossible. The injury is severe and there is a need for a prolonged period of bed rest, in my case two and a half months, in order for the physical damage to the spine to heal. As a result, deep structures of the body enter into a state of dormancy, having declined in quality and volume. When bed rest is over and rehabilitation begins, no attention is paid to waking up those structures and rebuilding the intrinsic capacity of the body. Instead, muscular effort is employed in an attempt to make the most of what limited abilities the body has left. This allows life to continue as a disabled person, but the approach serves to ingrain the changes and even cause further decline. Paraplegia is the condition that persists at the end of this process. Conventional physiotherapy and reliance upon the arms for all movement will build up muscular bulk. And it is easy to think when viewed from the front that a paraplegic has a strong upper body. However, when you look from the side you see a different picture. My body has been transformed through years of ABR therapy. But when I embarked upon this therapy in 2001, five years after injury, my body had very little depth to it. It was little deeper than the width of my arm. It was as though the back third of my body had simply been sliced away. And this is the defining characteristic of the condition of paraplegia. It will help here to explain a little about the nature of the body in general. It is often considered that the skeleton defines the shape of our body, upon which the muscles are attached and within which the internal organs are housed for their protection. It is also largely thought that strength comes from building up our muscles, but the muscles are hierarchically dependent upon the higher structures. At the top of the hierarchy is our core pneumatic structure. This is made up of the five cavities of the body, the head, the neck, the chest, the abdomen and the pelvis. These cavities do not contain the internal organs. They are made up of the internal organs and connective tissue. The smooth muscle tissue of the internal organs has a volume, a density and a pressure giving substance to the core of our bodies. The structure is considered pneumatic not because it contains air, but because it behaves as though it has a pneumatic pressure. These cavities are what give our body its curvaceous form with their alternating convex and concave shapes. This core structure gives us our foundation and it is upon this foundation that the skeleton is based. The reason our spine is curved is because it follows the form of that core structure. But the skeleton should not be seen in terms of the bones, but in terms of the joints, with the bones as mere sedimentary deposits along the force lines between the joints. Imagine each joint as a source of light, with beams of light connecting the point sources. The skeleton is considered an hydraulic structure with the joints containing an hydraulic pressure. The skeletal structure is what gives our body its fluidity and ability to move. 
The muscles give power to movement, but are hierarchically dependent upon the quality of the higher structures. The condition of paraplegia is one of catastrophic collapse of the core pneumatic structure of the body. My body had so little quality to it that you could feel my spine through my abdomen and you could feel the top of my shoulder blade by poking your fingers in above my collarbone. With all the work that we have done to rebuild the structure, it is inconceivable today that you could do this, but I can assure you that this was the case when I began my therapy work. With the collapse of the core structure, the spine ceases to be a connective element and floats around inside the body, playing little functional role. The spine loses its curves and the back becomes as flat as a board. The shoulder blades sink deep into the body, which is partly why you could feel them from above the collarbone. With no quality to the abdomen, the top half of my body collapsed down upon the pelvis, losing the waist. The bottom of my rib cage actually sat below the top of my pelvis. All this structural decline was above the level of paralysis. Below the waist there was total structural collapse. My pelvis lost all its volume and the pelvic bones caved in upon themselves, leaving neither room for bladder and bowels nor for connection of the legs. All the joints in the legs and feet lost their hydraulic pressure. They became slack to the point that the bones could knock together if I wasn't careful how I moved around. I had no normal sensation below the waist and from here down was simply dead weight that I dragged around with me. After pursuing the therapy work for some time, it became clear that even my head had not escaped structural decline. With injury to the spinal cord, it is as though the tension is flushed out of the spine and this extends right up into the dura of the head. In particular, the occipital part of my head had sunk in, but also a general decline in internal quality and volume. When we see the nature of paraplegia as one of catastrophic collapse of the core structures of the body, it becomes clear that paralysis from nerve damage is the least of our problems.